Hello Piscator pals, it's me the passionate Piscator and today I'm on the banks of the Bristol Feeder Canal here in Bristol where I live. Um, I was pondering around at home and well I was pottering first, I was doing a bit of washing and it's, a, it's Sunday today and I was sort of cleaning things, doing the washing up, you know, do a bit Lord you're playing some computer games of course and little bits and pieces and I was like oh it's got to about five o'clock in the afternoon what do I do now? Well, what else would I do? But pop down the canal for a little bit of fishing. I um, had a few leftover maggots in the fridge, which I thought were going to be a bit ropey. And actually they were looking pretty good. So I thought, I'll go down the canal. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Bring down the old float rod, which I've got ooh, here. And uh, perhaps see if I can target a particular species of fish. And I thought well, there's plenty of dace in here. There's lots of roach and bream uh, and perch, things like that. But what I haven't seen in a little while is a ruff, a little tiny ruff. Not that I don't see them in here because there's plenty in here, but I haven't really been targeting them. So I haven't caught one um, for a little while. Today, I'm just going to spend, well, I'll say today, it's going to be two or three hours, just uh, moving around down this end of the canal where I know there's a few uh, likely spots for ruff and see if I can get any. I've just uh, put the rod together. It's got I don't know if you can see back there. Woo! There it goes. Um, it's got a plummet on the end. And I'm just plumbing up a few areas. I'm going to be fishing quite close in. Um, initially, well, no, not initially. Initially, I'm going to be a little bit further out. And then gradually, gradually move into the, in, in, into the banks. So, I'm going to mark particular spots, which is where this is. Oh, it's a bit tricky with an overhanging big old willow tree above me. There we go. I'm going to mark about there. That's where the depth is. With a little bit of white out onto the rod tip. Uh, exactly where the length of the line is. Just so that I know whereabouts the different levels are as I'm moving the uh, float around. So I'm going to spend a bit of time doing that and then hopefully catch some fish, yeah. Just so you know, it's not all dreary looking canal underneath bridges. That's just what you're seeing from this angle. From the other angle, well, as we take you around that way, you've got loads of graffiti and rubbish and litter. You've got Sonic the Hedgehog, Super Sonic the Hedgehog. You've got Gandalf the Grey and the Blue Avenger there. Um, but actually, the bit I'm looking at is that way. Beautiful. <laughs> Much more like a nice bit of canal. <laughs> Along with um, some old maggots, I've also got a bit of old ground bait. Sort of about a quarter of a bag, a bit less than a quarter of a bag. Um, it's a worm based one so it's perfect for catching rough. I'm just going to put two or three balls in the edge. It should be more than enough to uh, bring in any rough if there are any. Or whatever else comes along really. There we are. So I can do a bit of floating out the middle there. Which I don't expect is where the rough will be. Particularly now. As uh, someone's opened the lock up a bit further on. And the water's whooshing through quite badly. The reason I've chosen this swim by this bridge. 
it's for two reasons really um and i'll show you here we go down here you've got this little bit of overhanging tree which um generally holds a few fish and right below my feet here where it hits up against this bit of the uh, the bridge there and goes underneath uh, you get a quite a big eddy going on so it, all the stuff that's coming down butts up against here and flows around in a big circle and uh, moves everything about and that tends to bring a few fish in if you're quiet which i haven't been particularly <laughs> um, but from here on in i'm going to be nice and relaxed nice and chill as quiet as a mouse on the bank as, as i can we're talking to you guys of course um ping in a few maggots and uh just have a little relax i'll stay here for about an hour or so and if i haven't caught anything in an hour i'm going to move back down the canal and find another little spot i know which could hold a few little rough but even if i don't catch one it's a lovely way to spend sort of a nice well i was going to say peaceful <laughs> evening but a nice peacefully there's less people about than normal uh, along the canal in bristol in the evenings on the sundays and um absorb a little bit of what is a tiny, tiny fraction of nature in the busy, bustling centre of uh, industrial, urban Bristol. The reason I've chosen to go for rough today isn't just because I haven't caught them in a long while. Um, it just so happens I think the conditions for them were absolutely perfect today. Well, except for the opening and closing of a lock, which is causing a huge amount of water to pass through, much like a river fishing today. Today, rather than bringing my float rod, I've already decided what I really should have bought is my feeder rod. I'd have stood a much better chance of catching them today with a maggot feeder on the end, something like that. But I'm here now, so I'm going to do what I can to make sure I can catch them. I think, actually, they may have closed the lock at the end, so it might slow down a little bit now. Um, rough, a fantastic little fish. Only a little mini species, but we know how much I love mini species. Uh, they like eating worms and maggots and things like that. They eat all manner of like invertebrates uh, that live on the bottom of uh, lakes and rivers and streams and canals, of course. Um, but they do tend to feed a bit better um, when it's overcast or going into the evening. Uh, during the day in the hot weather, you'll, they'll go as deep as they possibly can into the water, or they tend to. Um, a bit into the evening, as it starts to get a bit darker, or if, it's, or if it's overcast, they'll come into the edges and feed more. Hence the reasons why I've um, plumbed the depth out there, and plumbed the depth in the margins. So I can search for them now, out in the depths, and then later on, uh, search for them when they come in. Uh, I've put ground bait into the margins, mind you, so I'm hoping the smell might draw them in. Um, that's mostly because the water is flowing past so quickly, but most of the ground bait is going to end up right the way back down, uh, into the centre of Bristol by the time the fish actually find it. At least, that's the plan. That's how I think rough tend to uh, work. But of course, fish have other ideas, mostly. <laughs> but we shall see. Nothing is yet. I think they have closed the lock up at the end there. It's certainly rushing through a lot less, uh, less fast. Let's hope it stays closed. Uh, so... I can catch a few of these little guys if they're about. Uh, another thing with rough is they do tend to go around in groups. Uh, little pack hunters, they're quite serious predators in a, in a, in a group. Um, in fact, a lot of anglers will say that um, once you get rough into a swim, all the other fish disappear. Um, so they can be quite bullies, little ruffians really. And um, I'm hoping that happens today <laughs> in many ways. Um, but let's see, let's see. Oh, here come the gulls. Uh-oh. I haven't got any maggots. I'm not using bread. Leave me alone. <laughs> they will terrorise you if they see that you've got bait, which is another good reason for being underneath a tree. Although it makes it difficult for me to uh, get a fish in. And I certainly don't need, really need to cast out. It's just a little, little light swing. But it's, if I'm hiding under here, they can't see me. <laughs> anyway, let me quieten down again and see if I can catch a few little rough, if I'm quiet, coming into the margins. Come on, rough. <laughs> Thank you.
There is another species of fish in the canal that really loves maggots. It's not just the rough, but also the eel. <laughs> I've actually foul hooked this one. So he doesn't really count. Oh, come on, buddy. Oh, and they are slimy customers. <laughs> I'm not gonna, probably going to better hold them up to the camera to show you. What I'll do is I'll do a little flip and you can see him wriggling around in the net. There he is. Little boot lace. Thankfully, I did foul hook him because these guys are renowned for taking hooks really, really low down into their bodies when they strike. Ah, he's settled down a bit now. Let's have a look. There we are. Lovely predatory head. It's um, really nice to see eels, believe it or not. I do enjoy um, catching them because they are becoming more and more endangered. There we are. Put them back down there. I'll probably catch them straight away again. But they do make a right mess of your line and tackle and everything else. Oh, I thought he'd gone. He's still in there. Come on, Piscator, sort it out. He wants to go back in the net again. That's the problem. Right. I mean, it's completely upended now, so he can't be in there now. Now he'll go back down and find my maggots again and eat them. <laughs> if I was actually trying for an eel, I'd be using a completely different setup. Uh, I'd have a rig made up so that the fish couldn't swallow the bait past a certain point. Um, I do only have two pound line on today, so that line will break down very, very quickly should I have to snip the um, line on the rig. And I could just put a new hook length on. It's no big deal to me. The key important thing is, is the fish's health. Um, a little barbless hook inside its mouth is going to work through really easily. It's going to rust away in like a couple of days probably, especially in this water. This is Bristol water, remember? <laughs> um, it won't cause any harm to the fish. Far worse is trying to remove the hook if it swallowed it deep down, because you can do all sorts of damage to their internal organs. And these guys need to get big and they need to get back out to breeding condition right out to the Sargasso Sea or wherever the mystery place is they go and do their breeding to make sure the next lot of fish, next lot of eels can come back again and keep the process going on. They're a vital part of our ecosystem. Uh, they could be a bit annoying to anglers of course um, but I really love catching them when I'm specifically trying to catch them of course because that way I can set, as I say, I can set up a proper rig for them and um, avoid any uh, untoward damage to them but yeah really light gear today so it shouldn't cause many hassle <laughs> can get a bit tumultuous in this corner we am getting wetter than the fish <laughs> For a moment then, I thought I'd caught the right fish then. Looked about the right size, looked about the right shape. But it was a little perch. Bless him, how cute. But, you're not a rough. That doesn't matter though, does it? How cute is this? Oh, 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 oh. There we are, let's pop you back. Whee! In you go, you see big pike come up for that now. <laughs> That'll be the next on the list, you watch. Oh dear. Well, I was going to move on. Uh, it's been an hour now. I haven't got long left of the day, to be honest, so it still looks pretty clear out. But I'm going to stick with this swim, I think. So maybe the wrong decision, I don't know. But there's a few fish coming in now. Um, not many, but a few little tiddlers. And I'm hoping that with a bit of um, disturbance from the other fish, the rough are going to be like, oh, what's going on over there? And they'll come in and investigate what's happening. Whether that's the right decision, I don't know. We'll soon find out, I suppose. <laughs> I appear to be catching every other species of fish, the one I'm after, but I'm not upset about it. Look at that, a gorgeous, gorgeous gudgeon. Come on, focus, look at that. What a fish, a decent size too. 
Of course, gudgeon like to hang around on the bottom, same as rough do. So, mwah, you can go back down and join them. <laughs> Coming into the right time now for rough just as it starts to get dark I've probably got another half an hour or so I've had bream and I had a roach which <laughs> fell back into the water as I tried to get him in a couple of eels a few perch I haven't shown them all loads of perch every time I get one I'm like oh it's a rough oh no it's not and uh, gudgeon so it's been a hell of a a little mixed bag of fish could just do with those rough coming in now they'll be coming in from the deeper water I'd imagine to feed in the margins and I only want one I've set my target for one and I only need one but now is the right time definitely baits going in the edge I'm trying to keep as quiet as possible Let's see if we can get a little rough. Just a little one, please. <laughs> I suppose they had to come back somewhere. <laughs> Carries on like this. It'll have to be a, an eel and gudgeon show. Right, a net there, there we go. <laughs> Another little gudgeon. <laughs> How cute. Woo! So I got the net. <laughs> Fish are quite jumpy, so it's always good to have, have the net just on your legs there. So they can jump. Let's move you a bit closer. That's better, isn't it? Ugh, not to looking at my ugly mug, of course, but perhaps for looking. There we go. At this lovely little gudgeon. Ooh. Into the net again. <laughs> a bit of gudgeon juggling. There we go. Ooh. <laughs> I want the camera to focus on the gudgeon. There we are. Lovely. Mwah. Oh, I'd have to make this an eel and gudgeon show, wouldn't I? Not a flipping rough hunt. <laughs> In you go. Ho, ho, ho! What have we here, friends? I need that a net in, he's such a big one. Right, let's get my net here, because he's <laughs> wriggling all over the place. We have our rough. Look at that. What a gorgeous little fish. A very little fish this one there's bigger ones in here and I've certainly caught bigger ones in my time let's put your fin up for people to see there we are look at that a bit like a perch but that lovely speckled um, skin to him got the big spikes much like a perch much bigger than a perch fly for size which joins to that bottom fin there spikes on the gill cover a little voracious predator lovely let's pop you back into the bristol feeder canal where you live <laughs> i'm made up with that so happy <laughs> a little teeny tiny rough like that may not mean much to most people in fact it certainly doesn't mean much to some anglers as well the majority of anglers in fact many species are completely overlooked in the angling world and it's a crime in my opinion um, it doesn't matter if it's a socking great big carp or a teeny tiny stickleback. 
I really appreciate all of the amazing fish we have here in the UK. And I go out and target them. And why not? Very few people, um, when they walk past a river or a stream or a canal, really consider what's in that water. Of course, the nice fluffy things like rabbits and deer and you see birds all the time and insects and bugs, but you really just don't see fish very often. And that's where being an angler is so good. Because you can get to be face to face with some of those fish that exist in our water that no one really thinks about. And even in the angling community, a fish like that little rough, that's completely forgotten, but forgotten about as well. Seen as a nuisance fish, oh, why are we catching them? But every fish is, is part of this ecosystem that we have, be it the biggest predator like the pike, or one of the smallest ones like the rough. And they all t need some time taken over them and, and studied and looked at, particularly with the health of our waters, our canals and our rivers being so poor at the moment. Um, yeah, little fish like the rough are some of the ones which you can really, really learn about the water with. Oh, little bite. I love catching all of them, as you well know, even the tiddlers. And I'll happily, I mean, I could have easily have come down here today and had a roach fishing session or a bream fishing session, or even the dace fishing shallow on the surface. But no, it was the little rough I hadn't caught in a little while, but I really wanted to see. And if that's the only one I catch today, I can leave a very happy angler because I've seen one, I've caught one. And that's sometimes what it's all about. <laughs> anyway, it's really getting on now. Maybe I'll try for one more. It's maybe a slightly bigger one. They do grow a lot bigger in here, although I do tend to catch them at that small size. Um, one of my favourite places to fish is uh, um, on the Kennet and Avon Canal, because they seem to be a little bit bigger in there. Um, whether that's due to water quality or predation, I don't know. But again, you don't know if you don't find out. The mysteries that lie underneath our waterways um, are only glimpsed briefly by us. And of course, these fish live out their entire lives there. Um, so we can't possibly know what they get up to. And reasons why they do the things that they do. We just study the best we can, but we can't watch them 24-7. It's not like owning a cat where you can just watch it sleeping all day. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to see if I can winkle out a few more. Stop rambling on as usual. Waxing lyrical about a simple rough and uh, concentrate on what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> have it friends. The last fish of the day. A lovely little rough. Get your fin up. <laughs> and it stops. It blurs, <laughs> of course. Mwah. Thank you friend. Ooh, back into the water you go. Two and a half hours. That's how long I've been out for. Two and a half hours. And what a lovely, lovely time I've had. It's my local patch. It's the place I come to more often than anywhere else, just because I'll always have a few maggots left over from somewhere, or I'll have a bit of bread left over or something. And it's just like 20 minutes to get down here. Well, actually this end of the canal, it's about half an hour walk, but that's not bad, is it? Get in the steps, get all this big fat piscator belly, uh, a little bit slimmer, and enjoy some of the denizens of Bristol's feeder canal. Anyway, Again, that's time for me today. By the time I pack up, the current bun will be down. Hopefully you can get home just before it gets dark and actually put some more food into that big fat piscator belly. Oh, the traffic. <laughs> Not so peaceful here. Plenty of wildlife, uh, watching more hens and ducks and seagulls and the other more obvious Bristol uh, um, community, I should say. <laughs> Um, but I've been experiencing some of the hidden community of Bristol underneath this water. 
like this video if you've liked it. Subscribe to the Passionate Piscator YouTube channel that you have just been watching and I will see you guys and girls and everyone else next time on the bank. Bye!